Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, maximize size of a set after removals. The problem is easier than the usual third problem. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. The problem states that you are given two zero indexed arrays nums1 and nums2 of even length n. You have to remove n by two elements from nums1 and n by two elements from nums2. And after the removals, you insert the remaining elements of nums1 and nums2 into a set S. That is, after removal, you will merge the arrays such that you consider only unique elements. That's what inserting into a set means. So you have to return the maximum possible size of the set. In other words, you have to return the maximum number of unique elements in the final array. So let's take an example. Let's say nums1 is 1, 2, 1, 2. nums2 is 1, 1, 1, 1. Your task is to remove two elements from here, two elements from here, and after which two to remove is up to you. And after you remove the elements, you will merge it. You will merge the two arrays and see the count of distinct elements. So in this example, you can simply remove 1, 2 from here and 1, 1 from here. Once you merge it, it will become 1, 2, 1, 1 which has two distinct elements and that's the best you can do you can't create an array which more with more than two distinct elements because overall in across nums1 and nums2 there are just two distinct array so sorry two distinct elements hence the answer here is two so hope the problem statement is clear now how to solve this what is the brute force solution brute force solution would be simply try out whatever is given in the problem statement we have to convert this n sized array into n by 2 sized array we have to remove some elements so we have n elements we have to choose n by 2 elements so these are the number of ways in which you can choose this in the same fashion you will have the exact same number here so you will have these many combinations and for each of these combinations, you can simply merge and figure out what is the final length which is very inefficient even if you try to implement this it will uh, require you the knowledge of regression so if you are new to regression then this is a very good problem to try actually uh, you can see how you can select all the n by 2 sized array from this n sized array but if you know regression very well this might be a um, easy problem for you so you can skip that obviously this will not work we have to optimize now how to optimize optimization here is a bit simple we know that uh, we finally want unique elements in the array right so we would want to ideally fill these two arrays with unique elements only right even though we have to make n by 2 sized array but if we fill let's say the first three are unique elements and don't fill the other one it is kind of implicit that these are duplicates so you can actually fill them with duplicates and this will not contribute to the final answer anyways so our task is to fill up these array with unique elements and also fill up these array with unique element now one more thing to note here is you can't fill an element in both of these array because that will not be counted as an unique element right so the task is to fill some elements here some elements here such that there is no intersection at all and if you are if you do this you finally can just sum up these two values and that will be your answer right now what this means this means you have to pick n by two unique elements from this array n by two unique elements from the second array right such that they don't have any intersection right so if you pick one let's say here then one has a intersection here as well so you have to decide whether to pick one here or not right so let's defer these kind of numbers for now so we are deferring the numbers which exist in both because there is some decision attached to it right so let's start with numbers which are obvious so in this case seven is one such number seven doesn't occur here so if we pick seven here i am sure it will be present in the final array because it will not be present here and at all right so we first pick seven 
and what else there is no other element which is present here but not present in the second array so let's skip all of the others one others for now so let's pick the elements which are present in second array but not in first array uh, those elements are 6 and 9 right these are the two elements which are present in second array but not in the first array now we still have some boxes left right and we have some elements left as well but they are shared across the two array uh, what are those elements 1 2 3 4 5 and 8 these are the six elements which are shared across the two array now you want to fill up these elements in only one of these boxes right so let's start filling up the elements uh, one by one so we pick one here we put one here we pick two we have space here so let's put two here we pick three we have space here let's put three as well we have four let's put four here because we have space we have five let's pick five here because we have space now notice once you have put these elements you can't put these elements back in the secondary because they should occur exactly once right so now we have eight so we still have a space here so let's put eight and that's the end you can't uh, you don't have any other elements to fill so that's the end of your journey and in total you have five plus three eight elements you are able to eight distinct elements you are able to fill so final array can have at max eight distinct elements right because if you fill any other elements they will be either duplicates with six nine eight itself or they will be duplicates with one of these right so there is no other choice at all so that's basically the algorithm we started off by filling up the numbers which doesn't interfere with each other that is the number which is present in one but not present in two and similarly the number is present in 2 but not present in 1. Once we filled this, we took the numbers which are present in both. Now these numbers can exist in only one of these arrays. So we started filling up the gaps in either the first array or the second array based on how many elements we have and how many spaces we have. And finally, if we are able to fill all these n by 2 arrays, even if we are left with something, that is fine. If we are not left with something, we are left with some spaces as well, that is also fine. We simply just sum up these two numbers and that will be our answer, right? So if we have watched this point, I would encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself. Um, the complexity of this entire solution will be just order n. You have to just figure out two things, number of elements which are present here but not present here and number of elements which are common across the two. Do both of these things you can do using a simple unordered map um, in order and time, right? So next we'll be looking at the code. The code is exactly what we have discussed. We figured out number of elements which are only in nums one, number of elements which are only in nums two, and number of elements which are present in both. So how we had done it? We simply iterate over the array and see if the element is present in nums two or not, right? Once we have done this, we took the minimum of these with n by 2. It may happen that uh, even in nums1 and the numbers present in nums1 is not present in nums2 at all. Uh, so it, this number itself can go above n by 2. But what we want is at the end, we only want to fill this n by 2 sized array. So we only need at max n by 2 distinct elements. So that's why we just simply uh, chop them down to n by 2. After that, we figured out if there is a space left in either the first array or the second array. If there is a space left in the first array, we figure out how many spaces are there and how many we can fill. And based on that, we actually fill those spaces with the numbers and in the same fashion for the second one as well. After you have done this, only in n1 denotes the maximum number of unique elements you can have in from the first array chopped down to n by 2 similarly maximum number of unique elements you can have in the from the second array which is not present in the first n by 2 element selected from the array again chopped down to n by 2 so you can simply sum them up and that will be your final answer so hope that solution makes sense if you have any doubts feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already i will see you in the next one thank you